all day. We saw the president and the vice president's motorcades waiting for that plane to arrive at Joint Base Andrews. We know that in any moment that door is going to open and the president and vice president are going to move to greet these four. Tell us what we have learned about the efforts that both leaders put into making this return possible. Hey there, Lana. Good to be with you on this historic night. It certainly is one, and one that President Biden and the Vice President have celebrated in statements. We saw the President earlier today speak to the American people, and he gave a statement to reporters. And he was standing there with the families of these individuals who have not seen uh, their families for quite some time. In the case of Paul Whelan, some six years uh, nearly that he hasn't been able to see his family after being in Russian custody. And behind the scenes, U.S. officials were working. A lot of them working with the CIA, the State Department, the White House, working behind the scenes to get these hostages or get these prisoners that were held uh, by the Russians released. And part of that would mean uh, calling uh, several world leaders. The president, uh, I'll also note, during that day, July 21st, where he bowed out of the campaign, it was about an hour or so before that, he called his counterpart in Slovenia to make sure that the final details of this deal were worked out. But months before, the vice president, according to a U.S. official, was holding meetings with Olaf Scholz, uh, the German chancellor. She also held a meeting with the prime minister of Slovenia as well to hammer out these details and call for a prisoner exchange that would come to the final details of what we are seeing right now on our screens, that plane landing there at Joint Base Andrews with the president and the vice president uh, awaiting to greet uh, these three Americans who I, I can assume are only excited uh, to be back on U.S. soil and to see their families for the first time in months and perhaps years for uh, in the case of Paul Whelan, for example. Yes, and we saw their families together with the president at the White House earlier today. Stay there, Willie. I'm going to bring in now John Sullivan. He was U.S. ambassador to Russia from 2020 to 2022. He's now a CBS News contributor. Ambassador, this was a complicated endeavor, to say the least. Overall, eight countries were involved. There was a moment when it looked like perhaps it may all unravel, as Willie was explaining with Slovenia. Give us a better understanding of the diplomatic wrangling that had to happen to make this possible. Well, it's good to be with you, Lana, as Willie said on this historic night. Uh, look, a, a deal like this when there are just two countries involved, U.S. and Russia, one detainee from each side, is immensely complex. This is order of magnitudes more complex. Any particular country raises an objection, a particular detainee drops out of the mix, and the Russians are very likely to back out. Uh, I've been involved in these types of negotiations and trades over a number of years. And there are any little small problem that goes wrong that the Russians could seize on and back out of a deal. It almost happened with the release of Trevor Reed back in uh, the spring of, of 2022. So with all these countries involved and this large number of detainees, very complex negotiations, and everything had to go right on time. That plane now on the ground. We also want to update our viewers that we have learned from the White House that the three American citizens are on board. We expect them to deplane momentarily. Vladimir Karamurza not on that plane. Again, until those individuals actually touch down on U.S. soil, there has been sort of a collective breath holding for all of us. Ambassador, uh, I want to continue on this line with you, though, because there have been other prominent prisoner swaps, not all of them involving Russia. And some critics have expressed concern that this only incentivizes bad actors. How concerning is that? Oh, it's a grave concern, Lana, uh, particularly for Americans in Russia. Uh, Russia is just not, a, not just a bad actor. The Russians, the Russian government led by Vladimir Putin, believes it's at war with the United States. Any Americans in Russia are liable to be arrested, detained without cause. So uh, this deal is not a sign of uh, the start of a new era of good relations between the United States and, and Russia. It's, it's an opportunity to get our American citizens out of harm's way, but the risk still remains. 
and our viewers see now live images of President Biden, Vice President Kamala Harris moving towards that plane. We see also behind them some of the family members. It looks like it's Paul Whelan's sister directly behind them. We also saw other family members of the three detained American citizens at the White House earlier. We're watching as that door is now opening for the very first time. And I'm actually going to go ahead and pause for a moment and let's see who is the first to emerge. Again, we are waiting for Evan Gerskovich, Paul Whelan, and Alsu Karmasheva, all American citizens who have been detained in Russia, sentenced to six years or more uh, in the case of um, Alsu, six and a half years in prison, Evan and Paul, 16 years in prison. Let's just pause and take in this moment. The very first to arrive there, we see Paul Whelan, the retired Marine. He was visiting Russia for a wedding in 2018. He was held the longest out of all of them, six years. He was sentenced to 16 years of hard labor in a prison colony. He was accused of trying to be a U.S. spy. Uh, he was he received a hard drive, a flash drive rather, at his hotel. He believed that it was photos from a friend. The Russian government said that that was him working as a foreign agent spying. Embraces from both President Biden, Vice President Harris. A wave to the journalists who are assembled, and we imagine that he's moving on now to hug his sister. You see that there. <laughs> now also at the bottom of that plane back on U.S. soil, Wall Street Journal, Evan Gerskovich. He was arrested back in March of 2023, convicted on espionage charges. The State Department said journalism is not espionage. It is not a crime. He has been detained for 491 days. Earlier, we saw as his colleagues at the Wall Street Journal applauded his release as soon as his plane took off from Turkey. The Wall Street Journal's homepage reading, Evan Gerskovich is free. He has been smiling constantly. In the photos that we, see, we saw released from the U.S. government at the photos that President Biden had posted, smiles from Evan Gerskovich and smiles now as he greets his waiting family. And now the third to land. Alsu Kermashiva, a mother of two teenagers, a Radio Free Europe correspondent. She's a Russian American. She, she lives in Europe or had prior to her detainment by Russia. She went to see her ailing mother in the country when Russia accused her of spreading false information about Russia's military. She's a mother to two teenage girls, her daughter Miriam about to celebrate her 13th birthday. President Biden remarking on that happy occasion, the fact that she would be home for that birthday tomorrow. Making actually the White House press corps sing Miriam a happy birthday, and here she runs to her children. Ambassador Sullivan, it is a lot to take in, and it is hard not to feel emotional at the response of these families separated for so long. What do you see when you see these images? 
Well, uh, Lana, I've spent a lot of time and got to know Paul Whelan pretty well in uh, much different circumstances at La Fort of a prison, a notorious KGB facility uh, in, uh, in Moscow, and then at the labor camp where he was detained in Mordovia for years. Uh, and he looks much better tonight at Andrews, <laughs> I'll tell you. It's, uh, it's just a great scene. And his sister Elizabeth, I've gotten to know his family, his parents uh, very well. I've, uh, I'm, uh, I'm so happy for them and, and for him. It took a long time for this night to come, but a lot of people worked hard to make it happen. And you had spoken before about, in your role, uh, trying to advocate for Paul Whelan's release previously. Talk to us more about the U.S.'s official position on his detainment, as well as the detainment of these other two American citizens, as well as the legal process that they underwent when they were convicted uh, of those crimes. Sure. Well, I can start. The last question is easy. There is no legal process. It was a sham legal process for, for all three of them. I directly observed the, uh, the legal process that, that Paul went through in Moscow, although I wasn't physically able to go into the court. Okay. Uh, sorry. Because it was sorry. A Excuse me, Ambassador. Procedure. It seems that the president yep. is speaking. We want to listen to what he has to say. He's taking some questions from reporters. Toughest call on this one for other countries. Is there, I asked them to do some things that were against their immediate self-interest and uh, really very difficult for them to do, particularly Germany and Slovenia. Slovenia came in at the last minute, and, and I tell you what, the uh, chancellor was incredible. He was incredible. So, what's your message to other countries that think that the Americans Hey, look, that's been the case for all of history. <laughs> My job is to make sure, that, number one, they don't get them. If they do, we get them back. I don't buy this idea that you're not going to let you're going to let these people rot in jail because other people may be captured. We will set out all the notifications to all the other countries, all our citizens, what countries not to go to, what to do, what not to do, and they got to pay attention. I got more work to do. So. This is an extraordinary day, and um, I'm very thankful for our president and what he has done over his entire career, but in particular as it relates to these families and these individuals, what he has been able to do to bring the allies together on many issues, but in particular this one. This is just an extraordinary testament to the importance of having a president who understands the power of diplomacy and understands the strength that rests in understanding the significance of diplomacy and strengthening alliances. This is an incredible day. You can see it in the families, in their eyes, and in their crimes. When did you know you got to do that? A while ago. We got to make sure, we wanted to make sure everything was in place. And Slovenia made, made the right move at the right time. So, anyway, look, it's, it's time to trust. It's, I mean, really, I, I mean it. I know everybody thinks I talk about the notion of relationships with foreign policy with right. other countries. Much of it, and you've heard me kid with Barack, kid me, all politics is personal. It matters. Other leaders trust you, you trust them, you get things done. And that's how this got done. A lot of, a lot of help. Anyway, thank you. How worried are you I'm very concerned about it. I had a very direct meeting with the uh, Prime Minister today, and uh, very direct. We got it. We have the basis for a ceasefire. He should move on it, and they should move on it now. Thank you. 
Uh, I want to bring back in Willie James Inman, who covers the White House for us. Uh, a lot of powerful moments there with Vice President Harris calling this an extraordinary day. President Biden uh, reinforcing the importance of diplomacy and having those relations with other leaders. We see the president getting back on the plane, or not getting back on, but, but boarding that plane, presumably to thank the others who are still on that plane who are involved in returning these three American citizens home. Uh, Willie, actually, I, I want to ask you not merely about this moment, but what we just heard from President Biden, because he did make a bit of news there in saying, uh, in answering a question about the killing of Hynia. Um, and he said it did not help with the ceasefire. He, he also said we have the basis for a ceasefire, and that needs to happen, saying that he was speaking uh, directly with the prime minister. Did that strike you as something that was uh, was particularly significant as we are looking at all of the things that are happening around this world right now? Yeah, Lana, it certainly is. And it really just goes to show that uh, it's not just one part of the world, it's many. It's many different things and tasks that the pre president has on his plate right now, even though he is not running for re-election and he'll continue to serve out the remainder of his term. He uh, talked about that uh, phone call that he had with Prime Minister Netanyahu. This comes after those reports in the Middle East uh, that the Israelis uh, reportedly took out uh, a key leader of Hamas, also a key leader of Hezbollah uh, in Beirut. Uh, the president certainly calling that and saying uh, that it wasn't helpful. Uh, in terms of those ceasefire negotiations that have been ongoing. They're still ongoing, White House officials uh, tell us, but uh, this really has thrown a wrench into those conversations. Uh, the uh, Qatari prime minister, uh, the foreign minister, I'll note, uh, essentially said that if you kill the person that you negotiate with, it essentially makes it harder to negotiate. Uh, so clearly, uh, the president having a direct conversation with uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu uh, earlier today. I'll note that the vice president was also in that call, according to a readout uh, provided by the White House, Lana. And Ambassador Sullivan, I want to head back over to you for your take on this, because it is all interrelated, and, and this prisoner swap uh, is a case study of that, in, in part because eight different uh, countries were involved, as we heard President Biden saying there. He asked some countries to do things that were against their own interests, but because of the diplomatic relationship and the trust that he says he has built up, uh, the goodwill that the United States has been built up over the years, that this was able to happen. I'm hoping we can get more on your reaction to what the president said. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Lana. No, it's uh, the uh, the cooperation of our allies, and in particular, the president talked about uh, Slovenia. I'd note uh, the German uh, decision by the chancellor to release a very dangerous Russian FSB officer who committed a murder in Berlin. Not a popular move among Germans. This man is serving a life sentence for uh, premeditated murder. So uh, the, the cooperation of the allies broadening the scope of Russian detainees who would be traded to the Russians in return for those Americans and others who would be released was key to getting this done. But I'd also note, if we talk about interrelationships and uh, the president's discussion of his conversation today with Prime Minister Netanyahu, think about these interrelationships. Iran backs, supports, controls Hamas and Hezbollah. And who is uh, Iran's uh, uh, back or now, but uh, but Russia and Vladimir Putin. So the interrelationships are uh, are very important on both sides. I'm so glad that you brought up the uh, the point about Russia receiving seven of its own uh, and and some of the complicated history uh, in, in part of the resumes, if you will, of these individuals. Uh, one, a convicted killer who was, uh, who was sent to another country uh, on a political assassination mission. Um, but I also want to pause and remember some of the Americans who are not on this plane, because in addition to American citizens who are still held in Russia, there are also American citizens that are being held in other countries. What do you think the prospects are for all of them as this historic day comes to an end? 
Well, uh, there are uh, my former colleagues throughout the U.S. government who are working uh, as we see on all those other cases. Oh, I'm sorry, Ambassador. Every time you're on a roll, it seems that the president stops to take questions. Let's listen to him again. Great satisfaction and a feeling of relief for the family. Did you think that this moment would come, sir? Yeah, the family members and the three Americans, sir. Pardon me? What did you have to say to the three Americans and their family members, sir? Welcome home and beyond that. You said, sir, that family is everything earlier today. What has it meant to be with the family all day today as they are now finally reunited with their loved ones? You can appreciate, look, anyone who's lost family or worried about whether family would come home, whatever the circumstance was, has to understand the extreme. And you've heard me say it before. My dad used to say family is the beginning, the middle, and the end. And it really is. It's about who we are. It's about who we are as a country. What is your message tonight to Vladimir Putin? Stop. What's your message stop, to the stop, American stop, people? Stop, yeah, sir. The American people are watching this broadcast stop, tonight. And I think it's fair to say they're celebrating with the families. What's your message to the American people? There's nothing beyond our capacity when we act together. <laughs> nothing, nothing, nothing. Yeah. Remember who the hell we are. We're the United States of America. The United States of America. We put back together with relationships with countries we haven't had before. We've built NATO. We've rebuilt the circumstances that allowed this to happen. That's why it happens. And Mr. President, should American journalists ever feel afraid about reporting abroad? I think, look, no matter where you are, there's certain places that you're going to be afraid. I mean, I'm, 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 the idea you're never going to be afraid. You'd never show up anywhere in, in the Middle East. You wouldn't show up anywhere in Russia. You wouldn't show up anywhere. It matters. It matters to be aware of what you're going into and not to take undue chances because it's going to I'm going to come get you. Of your many achievements, where does this rank among your many achievements as president? Look, this is, to me, this is about the essence of who we are as a country. It really is about personal relationships. It's about family. It's about being able to have access to your own, the people you love and you adore. Imagine how you'd all feel if you had, you were being held captive unfairly, and you had children waiting home for you. Imagine how you feel. How many of you have children? Raise your hand. Yeah. Okay. Imagine being sitting in a prison, not knowing you'll ever get home, wondering what's going on with your children, how they go to bed at night crying, how they ache every night and every day and It matters. Mr. President, what do you understand that very hours before you announced that you were going to be uh, leaving the 2024 race. Can you talk to us a little bit about uh, how important it was for you to get this deal done, uh, knowing that you were not going to seek a second term? Was it very important? I still get it done even if I was seeking a second term. Not me. I'm still all right. You're stuck on me as president for a while, kid. There's no way out, okay? You got me for at least another 100 or 90 days or so. So it, it, it did not even do with that. It had to do with the opportunity and trying to convince one last country to say, okay, they'll step up. Mr. Look, President, Mr. How President, President, how critical this will now be cemented as a part of your one-term uh, legacy. How are you thinking about the rest of your time in office? How are well, you? Well, we can talk about that another. Mr. President, Chancellor Schultz's commitment to getting this deal across the finish line. Could it have been possible without that agreement no. that you made? Thank you. Mr. President, Madam Vice President, Madam Vice President, your reaction tonight. It's a very good night. It's a very good night. And it's testament to the work that we prioritize under Joe Biden's leadership in our administration, which is the importance of building alliances, building the strength that we have through diplomacy to have outcomes like this. And there's so much at stake right now in our country and in this upcoming election, including who has which approach to understanding America's strength. This is an example of the strength of American leadership in bringing nations together to deliver American I wonder whether you have a message for somebody like Mark Vogel, Madam Vice President.
All right, President Biden now leaving reporters. We heard questions given to him as well as Vice President Harris. Uh, he was asked about his message to Putin, a simple one word response, stop. And when asked about his legacy, the president shrugged it off, saying we can talk about that another time. Uh, clearly rejoicing in this moment, uh, the opportunity to bring these three Americans back home. And when he was asked about how this ranks among his achievements, he said that this is about the essence of who we are as a country. John Sullivan has been sticking with us. Ambassador, every time we've tried to get a little bit deeper into things, it seems like we have been interrupted, but it has been happy interruptions in many ways as we have seen joyful reunions and have heard more about what has happened uh, and just the elation of everyone who was involved in this process. But uh, before we pause to listen to the president, you were talking about some of the other Americans who are still held in captivity and, and giving a moment's pause for all of them. Well, for all of them in, in other countries uh, and even still in Russia. Uh, I think a reporter mentioned as the president was walking away from uh, that latest uh, round of, of questions, it's the name of Mark Fogel, who is an American, a former teacher at the Anglo-American School in Moscow. Uh, we knew him very well at the embassy. All of the U.S. embassy children went to the Anglo-American School. He, uh, he was arrested before Brittany Griner on virtually the identical charge and has been given a 14-year sentence. He's wrongfully detained. Uh, he is among other Americans who are still left behind that we can't lose sight of, and not just in Russia, but in other countries as well, I'm sorry to say. Um, and I was hoping to pop back over to Washington, D.C. Uh, Willie James Inman has been following all of this there today. Uh, I don't know if you have the statement that was released by Brittany Griner, um, but she and her wife celebrating this happy news. Talk to us a little bit more about some of the reactions that we've heard um, as soon as we, we learned that these American citizens would be coming home. Yeah, that's right, Lana. We've seen a lot of uh, celebration for this moment uh, that has been months, if not years, in, in the making. And, of course, in the case of Paul Whelan, he waited years in a Russian prison. And this is certainly something that the president, the vice president, celebrating in statements earlier today. And as you saw, uh, there is quite rare to see them both together uh, interacting with the press uh, that close. This is certainly something that President Biden wants to talk about uh, coming up there and taking questions uh, from the press. I'll note that a, a couple of themes emerge uh, with both of the statements that we heard from uh, the president and the vice president. They talked about those personal relationships. The president talked about family. That's certainly something that we know that he cares deeply about. He talks to his grandchildren famously every day. The president is very close with his family. He also knows loss as well. Uh, and the vice president talked about those personal relationships also. And I want to touch on uh, that particular uh, person, Olaf Scholz, the chancellor of Germany, who uh, the president and the vice president had interactions with, and the president admitting that this deal wouldn't have uh, come together without the chancellor of Germany making that, uh, that concession uh, that the ambassador mentioned that the Germans certainly don't like having that convicted killer who is attached, uh, who has ties to the Russian intelligence agency who killed uh, a man and was convicted of murder, serving a life sentence. That was a major concession from the Germans that they had to make uh, to make this deal happen. But as you mentioned, uh, people like Brittany Griner, her wife coming out celebrating this decision. We've seen lawmakers, uh, a bipartisan group of lawmakers, celebrate this decision as well, though there has been some criticism on the Republican front, uh, specifically. Uh, one lawmaker in particular I want to mention is uh, Mitch McConnell, uh, the Senate Minority Leader. He essentially said, without serious action to deter for Further hostage taking by Russia, Iran, and other states hostile to the U.S., the cost of hostage diplomacy will continue to rise. So, a little bit of criticism there, uh, essentially saying that this can continue to happen without putting on a major cost for those countries that do this to American citizens. Ambassador John Sullivan, want to turn back over to you for your final thoughts. Well, I just to echo what uh, what Willie said about uh, there is a cost to the United States. Uh, we've we and our allies have paid it in releasing these uh, these Russian criminals, including dangerous Russian criminals. But uh, it's a moment I would hope that all Americans, Republicans and Democrats, 
uh, can celebrate the release of our, our fellow citizens from captivity in what were brutal conditions. I, I can recall it's, it's more than six years ago now, a very similar scene, even, even uh, later, uh, earlier in the morning, about three o'clock in the morning, Secretary Pompeo, then Secretary Pompeo, Secretary of State, brought home three Americans from North Korea. And President Trump went to Andrews and there was a joyous celebration then. This is a moment that should be celebrated for all Americans today, tonight. Uh, and then we need to get back and focus on the hard question that, uh, that Willie just posed about how we're going to try to stop the Russians and other governments from doing this again. All right. Ambassador John Sullivan, Willie James Inman, thank you both. Well, a day that began with breaking news now ends with it, as those three Americans are safely back on U.S. soil and reunited with their loved ones following a complex trade that involved eight different nations. The Americans freed from Russian prisons Paul Whelan, Evan Gerskovich, and Alsu Kermesheva. Our coverage will continue on CBS Mornings, CBS News 24-7, as well as your local CBS stations. This has been a CBS News special report. I'm Lana Zak in New York.